Hey, what's going on guys? It's JC from Most of the Effects here. And in today's video, we're going through the brand new release, M Intro Vibrant. This is a collection filled with eye-catching animations for your intros to really start your videos off with a bang. So let's dive into it. So once you've installed the pack via the M installer, you'll want to head over to the effects tab where you'll search the pack name in. Here you'll find the 25 different titles and they're super easy to use where you'll drag the title onto the timeline and begin customizing from there. Before we get started though, however, I do recommend just hovering over all 25 of the titles. That way you can start to get a feel of what this pack has to offer. And then if there are any that catch your eye, you can just hit the start button and they go into your favorite section. Now, everything I'm going to be doing is pretty standard and will work across all the different titles. But let's kick things off with the chromatic flash. So dragging that onto the timeline by default, we get this super cool morphing motion into the logo. So first things first, let's get rid of this your logo section and actually put in a real logo. To do that, we'll head into the inspector tab, go to logo controls, and then you'll see this option where it says logo type, logo source, and then browse. So the logo type allows you to choose between whether you want to use a logo or a text option. Maybe your brand doesn't quite have a logo yet. You can just use the text in your brand fonts and then you have the same effect. For now, we'll stick to using a logo. So what we'll do is hit the browse and then select the logo from the relevant folder on your machine. And now that's loaded in, we'll break everything else down in the inspector tab. So the first thing I always do if you're working on a 4K timeline is that you'll want to hit this 4K quality box to ensure the quality and the scaling is correct. Next, we have these in and out points. These are going to control the animation when the layer starts and ends. However, if the layer is too short, the title won't quite animate out due to the amount of time it will take. Then the first tab we have is the content controls. And this is the overarching control center that allows you to manipulate the entire graphic, including the positioning, the scale, and the rotation. This is something that is standard across all the titles. And if you do make a mistake or go too far, you can just double click the option name and it'll snap right back to the default setting. And skipping over the logo type and source, we're going to go straight into the logo position. Now we do have the same options we did have in the content controls with the position scale and rotation here. However, it, this will work differently as this purely relates to where the logo is placed. So if I was to go earlier on in this animation where you can see this kind of shadow is coming on top, the shadow is going to remain where it is regardless of where I move this logo position. So make sure you do know the difference because if you want to move the entire effect, you will have to use the content controls. However, if it's just the logo you want to use, then you can just use the logo controls here. And that's the same with the scale and rotation. Then we have the logo gradient, which again is just controlling the colors of that effect. You can manipulate those colors by clicking onto the triangle, then selecting the color box below, and then you can change that to whatever you want. And if you wanted to add an additional color to the gradient, you can just click on the space in between and you will get a new triangle created. To get rid of it, just select it and press delete. Then we have the text box controls, which are very standard to your normal text box. And this will only work when you do have the text option selected. And lastly, we have the logo outline. And this, as you can see, when I toggle on and off, controls the outer border we have on the logo. And below that, we have a thickness slider that's going to control how thick that logo outline will be. Now moving on to the effects controls, this is where we can really control the look of the animation. And the first setting I turn off before I start doing anything is actually the grain. Not for the final product, but just while I'm making the adjustments, because when you do have grain switched on, it slows down your machine considerably. So if you are having some issues with playback, that could be because you do have the grain switched on. So for now, I do recommend just switching it off. Then at the top where we have the reveal controls, this is going to manipulate the effect when the logo is animating in. So you can see this reveal is kind of coming in a clockwise motion before revealing the entire logo. And then to manipulate these sliders, you can see the different effects that it'll be making. So make sure to really play around with this and don't be afraid to go too far because you can always just double click and snap back to default. Then later on in the animation, we do have the glow controls. Switching that on and off, you can see the big difference that's making. So again, to play around the sliders to really find the look you like. I quite like when you minimize the glow gain, but increase the size. It gives it more of a natural glow that doesn't seem too overexposed and it's just a bit more subtle and I prefer that effect. And the impact of the effects will vary depending on the colors of your logo. If the colors are very bright, you may have to turn things down a bit. And then we do have the grain controls, which I do like the look of. I'm going to dial that back down, but I will keep this unchecked until I'm ready to export. And the last tab we have, which is the most simple one, is the background controls. Literally as simple as that. If you want to change the color of a background, you can just open up the color tab and choose any color you like. And the alpha channel we have here at the bottom will essentially control the opacity of the background. So the lower you have that, the lower the opacity will be of that background. So for now, I'll turn it off and that's pretty much done. But one thing you do want to remember is that all these options we're changing are only affecting the animation of the logo coming in. Once that animation ends, the logo will go back to its default look. The longer you do have the layer, the longer that default look will last. 
and you won't need to worry about changing any of the settings if you do manipulate the layer length. It will automatically adjust to the length of time. But that is pretty much how simple these intros are. So don't feel limited as there is so much opportunity for you to make your footage really stand out. And just before we do wrap this up, I will go over one more intro that has a few more options to customize and that's the Rainbow Riptide. So skipping over the first two tabs as they are the exact same as before, we'll go straight into the flare controls. And this is for the initial flare color as the layer starts. So this can be toggled on and off here and the randomness with the flare seed can be controlled here. And then we have the color controls. Next, we have the rainbow controls. And this is for the next part of the animation where we do have this rainbow riptide effect. So again, we can toggle that on and off if we want it. We can control the blur, the distortion. You know, you can really play around these sliders to get a really unique look. And then we have the same kind of gradient as before. Lastly, on the effect controls, we have a few more options than before. First is the shake option, which really allows you to dial in how much the logo moves. Then we have two different glow sections and toggling them on and off, you can see which one controls what. So glow one controls the glow of the rainbow riptide and glow two controls the glow of the actual logo. And lastly, we have the prism controls and toggling that on and off here, you can't really see the difference it's making. So I'd recommend going back to the first part of the animation where the prism is really apparent. And now you can really see the difference that manipulating these sliders will make. Background controls the exact same as before and that's pretty much it. But maybe I'll change this logo to something else that does fit the eye a bit better. That looks pretty good to me. I'll just manipulate the footage. Get that right in the center. And now we have a finished result. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use the pack. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to the website emotionvfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your DaVinci Result Overview for M Intervibrant. See you in the next one.